Hey yo, what's good? It's your boy C. Holla Bloomberg. Back for the part three version of the Adobe Audition tutorials. Now in this tutorial, this this one honestly, I, I feel like this should probably be like number one. Cause I've been doing a lot of work and I've been doing some research with Adobe and I've been learning a lot of things myself. You know what I'm saying? I had on a comment on one of my other tutorials, a guy was like, um, he been recording for five years and you know he's still learning things and I'm I feel the same I feel like the exact same way. I feel like I've been doing this shit for about six, seven years and I'm still learning new stuff, you know what I'm saying? So the little bit of new stuff I'm gonna share with y'all. Um I don't know if anybody caught the first part one and two of my tutorials. If y'all didn't see those I would like for y'all to go see them, but for just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to just do everything I did in those two tutorials. I'm going to just do them all over again. YouTube do allow you to record up to 15 minute videos. So more than likely, this video probably will be 15 minutes. So <clears throat> like I said, everybody know how to uh, load up the Adobe Audition program. When you load it up, this is what you should, what you should see. Um, First of all, when you load it up, if anybody don't, if they didn't mess with none of their default settings or anything like that, when you load up Adobe Audition, you should only have like three tracks or six tracks. You should have six. So you, what you want to do, you want to add more tracks. So you're going to click on insert. You're going to click on audio track. And then when audio track come up, if it ever come up. Audio track. What's, what's going on? Uh, can I insert more tracks? Okay, I probably got too many tracks open, so I'm about to delete a couple tracks. Yeah. All right, my bad, y'all. I had a little technical difficulty, but uh, you want to click on insert, then you want to click on add tracks. <clears throat> And then you're going to click on add, add about 25 tracks. And then you want to add about four bus tracks. I mean, you got, you can only add, you, you can add two, but I recommend adding four. So we're going to add, so add four bus tracks. I already did it. Y'all want to hit the okay button and then all your tracks is going to come up. Then after that, you want to start getting ready to record. Now my last video, I told y'all to, to change these but don't don't change those leave all of you want all those to say master all of them to say master and then you want to start naming your tracks too I always name my first uh, track to the beat I always name the first one uh, beat because you always want to put the beat on the first one so you want to name that beat and then you want to start getting ready to record now when you in Adobe you can you open up the effects rack like I just did, and then your first one you want to put a compressor on there. So for those of you who don't know how to get to your compressor, it's amplitude and compression, then dynamics processing. And the one I use is classic softening. I like to use classic softening a lot, but uh, I mean it really it really really de it really depends on the kind of mic you got. And the type of song that you're doing, but most of the time you probably gonna use you probably gonna want to use classic softening. I know somebody told me that when you're doing voiceovers, you kind of want to use Compander. You may want to try that out. And then the other the other two ones that I use is Vocal Comp, the negative twenty four, and then I use Vocal Comp uh, eight eight to one fast attack. So those are three that I use, but it's going to be different for everybody because everybody got different mics and everything. So you definitely want to make sure that you um, experiment with all of these settings and just use what works best for you. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the only thing I can really recommend. And then so <clears throat> moving on to the next one, you want to put your de on there. I use hard de -esser. I recommend anybody to use the hard de -esser. I mean, it's not like... I mean, you can use the medium. 
I I just experimented with the light de-esser and it don't really it's not really much of a difference. So you gonna either use between medium or hard. Just use hard to be on the safe side. So you want to put your hard de-esser on. And then this is where a lot of people mess up at. This is where a lot of newbies, a lot of new people, a lot of people that that's not used to recording, that's not been in a real studio setting. This is very important. You want to put a high pass filter on your vocals. And the reason why you want to do that is because if you're not recording in the booth or any isolated area, it's impossible for your mic not to pick up any extraneous noises in the background. It's just impossible unless you record in a soundproof booth. 99% of us out here, we don't we don't have that luxury to record in a soundproof booth. So you want to make sure you put this high pass filter on here. And what this filter is going to do is going to filter out any of the low end noise, any of the low end humming, any of that, any of that noise. This is what you really want to do. And what a lot of people do in Adobe is they want to go use the noise reduction or the hiss reduction. No, you don't want to use those. They're going to destroy your vocals. You want to make sure you put this high pass filter on there. And then like. Um, if you got any kind of high noises, like a high hiss or anything, then you want to put your low pass filter on. But nine times out of ten, you're going to be messing with the high pass filter. So to get to the high pass filter, <clears throat> you go to filter and EQ. You want to go to parametric filter, not graphic equalizer, not notch filter. You want to go to parametric equalizer. And then you want to click generic high pass filter. And there it is. Now those are the three that I use, and just to be, just to like make things go a little bit quicker. Next time you start up your session, make sure you save this. Anything like this whole little these settings right here, you can save these. Now I save mine under vocals, so let's just say we are gonna save them under vocals. Hit OK, and then every time you uh come to your effects rack, you just hit vocals, and then there's all your effects right there. So that that saves a lot of time, and you want to do that <clears throat> for every every track that you're gonna record on. So you want to so for my next track, I want to hit vocals. You know what I'm saying? For my next track, I want to hit vocals, and y'all should get it from there. Now, <clears throat> moving on. Now we put we added four buses to our session. In this session, I only got two, but y'all should have four of them. Your bus, the first bus, it should say bus A. I want y'all to call that reverb. So I want y'all to type in reverb. Type in reverb. For the next one, I want y'all to type in delay. Delay. Now on your reverb bus, I want you to add a studio reverb. And this is a preset that I made. Smaller reverb. But you want to, any of these ones... You want to use small or medium. I mean, if you use a large reverb, it's going to really make it sound like you in some kind of deep church, big church. You know what I'm saying? So you don't really want to mess with that. You really going to use smaller, medium or you going to use mastering reverb. I'm going to just pick mastering reverb just for the tutorial purposes only. Now for delay, you want to go to echo and delay and then you want to go to echo then you want to go to form and delay. You want to go to form and delay. Now, the you see where it say delay time. The delay time is going to change depending on what kind of beat you're using. But the one thing you really want to do is make sure you like lock left and right. You want to make sure you hit that button, lock left and right. And then you might want to turn the feedback down. So let's turn the feedback down to 50. You know what I'm saying? Turn the feedback down to 50. I usually turn my echo level up to 100, <clears throat> and then we come back once we once once you figure out what kind of beat you're doing, then you will change this accordingly. But for now, you're doing just fine. You're doing per you're doing just fine. So now you got your echo, or you got your delay, you got your reverb and your delay going. Once you got that, you're really ready to record. I mean, you're really ready to record. Oh, it's one more thing. Now this is very important too. In my last videos, um, I told I would have probably had y'all put the reverb and delay in the effects rack on the individual track, but it's really important that you send those to buses because if you put like a reverb or a delay 
on this part right here in the in the individual track is gonna change the integrity of the file. Like when you when you do a reverb, you want your reverb to kind of complement the vocals. You don't want it to, you know, be in. You don't want it to kind of mess the vocals up. So you always want to send that through a bus or what we would call like an auxiliary track, something like that. And you want to use these auxiliary tracks and these buses for like. We already know we're going to use them for reverb and delay, but then you can use them for like, um, and just for the sake of this tutorial, let me do a couple things right here. I'm going to add a couple more bus tracks so I can show y'all what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so I added two more bus tracks and then, so like you would put something like a chorus, the chorus effect, we're going to put the chorus effect on this, you know, put the chorus effect you go to you put the chorus on there modulation chorus you know what I'm saying you want to do that for this kind of stuff but a lot of people been asking me about auto tune you don't want to sing auto tune through an auxiliary track or through a bus track you always want to put auto tune on an individual track because remember what I told y'all when you put this when you put these effects directly on the track it's going to change the integrity of the file it's going to really like really change the file and for auto tune you want to you want to be able to do that you want to be able to change the integrity of the file obviously because you're looking to change the pitch of your voice and everything so for those things you want to put that directly on the effects list but now now this is the like this is basically like the most important thing that I'm about to explain to y'all right now once y'all got all your your bus tracks ready your auxiliary tracks ready you got all your effect. You got your effects rack filled with your compressor, your deesser, and then your low pass filter. Got all of that. Now you want to add your reverb and your delay, or your or your chorus or whatever. Now to do that, you want to go on S1. You're gonna go to S1, and then you're gonna click on reverb. So you're gonna add your reverb for your S1, which stands for send one, and then you're gonna go to S2 or send two, and then you're gonna click on delay. And then if you wanted to put your chorus in there, then you can put S3 and then you put your chorus in. And like I said, you want to do this for every single track that you plan on recording on. Every single one. Now this is where it's going to get a little tricky after that. After you record your vocals, like so say for instance I recorded some vocals. You wouldn't be able to hear the reverb because you got the volume all the way down. And this is the volume button right here. This is what's going to adjust your reverb. Or your delay or your chorus effect. So I usually use around negative 50. But the thing about Adobe that I don't like is that when you change the volume of the scene, it kind of raises the overall volume of the of the vocal. It's really just supposed to raise the the reverb or the delay or whatever you put in there. But instead, it kind of raises the overall volume of the vocal. So when you start going to this and changing the volume. Make sure you lower your um your volume on your fader on your uh on your main fader. Kind of turn it down a little bit, cause when you start raising this, it's gonna like make it way way louder. And then you be like, well, wow, you know what I'm saying? You don't think you did something wrong? You ain't do nothing wrong. That's just how Adobe work. And that's why I tell people I really recommend y'all to use Pro Tools. It's it's kind of like it's honestly it's just a better program. You are gonna get way better quality. You know what I'm saying? You might have to spend a couple extra some extra money but you definitely want to get pro tools but everybody don't got pro tools a lot of people use adobe so that's why i'm really doing these tutorials but after that i mean that's that's all you want to do once you got that going there it is you know you got your effects everything you got your this right here and remember what i told y'all like what i said in some of my other videos like you don't really want to go into edit view. You don't really want to go into this too often. So let, hold on, let me just load up something right quick, so I can um one last one last thing I want to show y'all before I run out of time. I got thirty seconds and I don't want to have to make another video. So I'm gonna try to do this as fast as I can. Um, say for instance, like when you want to when you want to cut the track down, instead of going into the track and hitting the silence button. All you got to do is go to the hybrid tool, select the hybrid tool, 
highlight it and then go to delete like you want to go click on delete but that's all the time i got check me out later hit me back it's your boy c holla bloomberg i will be hitting y'all with another video sometime i don't know we'll see